I'm Vanessa Tomlinson from Brisbane, Australia. I'm a percussionist and today I'm going to talk about my practice with found objects. I'm fascinated with found objects A because they're really cheap, B because they're ubiquitous, anyone can find them anywhere, um, and C because they each have a unique pitch and timbral quality which teaches me a lot about sound, teaches me a lot about um, my hierarchies and musical training, and it unteaches me um, a lot about harmony and melody. Today I'm going to demonstrate a lot of the objects that um, I like to play with. Uh, they're mostly ceramic, glass, wood and metal. Um, some of these objects are things that I have carried with me for a long time, but as is the case with any found object, objects often break, um, they become unusable for various reasons. So this particular setup I'm demonstrating today is being set up for the very first time. Um, any performance you hear of mine today is a first performance on these objects. So all of the pitch combinations and um, intrigue of the timbral combinations I'm sharing with you in real time. I want to talk through a few of the objects in a little more detail, um, both my approach to them, some of the techniques I use, and some of the ways in which you can set them up for yourselves at home. Um, firstly, I'm a little bit obsessed with metal bowls. Um, and I just wanted to point out, these are really heavy bottomed metal bowls. They're high quality mixing bowls. This particular set came from a Goodwill shop in San Diego in 1992. So I've had these for quite a lot of years. My math's 28 years. Um, they're really great with resonance. And then you also hear these flanging sounds I do on them. And probably one of my favorite sounds is um, rock on heavy bottomed bowl. where you really get to hear all of that pitch flanging together. Um, and I guess a lot of my work on found objects is what I'd call post-electronic. Um, I learn through um, electronic manipulation about sound and then I apply that knowledge to um, acoustic objects. So I, I'm really interested in digging out of these objects all of these sonic possibilities. So this is a ceramic bowl, which is just the normal bowl that anyone would have in their kitchen. Um, what's interesting about these bowls is that they're actually quite difficult to break if you play them with the right kind of pressure and force in the right spot. Um, and they're also quite resonant if they're played like that. So you need to basically be on the same angle as you'd be on a marimba. You'd play like this on a marimba. So you need to play in that same on that same angle. If you play like this, you'll end up putting too much force down there and it'll crack pretty much instantly. Um, and it's the same when you're using um, the end of a stick, although you can kind of get some interesting timbre changes um, with different positions. I really, really like ceramic bowls because they come with such a clear pitch content. And I've just chosen four today to put together and you'll hear that they have their own melodic fragments and their own interest. Um, and it's like, I just have to accept who they are in their collective grouping. Planks of wood are fantastic um, sound makers. Obviously, um, a marimba derived from planks of wood being placed over a resonating surface and being hit. Um, any 
long surface, as long as you place um, some object at two, sorry, three elevenths from each end of its total dimension, you'll end up on a nodal point which does not change the resonance of the sound. So you can mount um, pieces of wood or uh, metal pipes in the same way so they have a really sweet sound. So in this instance I've mounted just one piece like this. So you do get some resonance on that but these other pieces have absolutely no mounting on them and so you end up with quite a harsh dull sound that I think Lizzie Welsh calls a submarine sound. This particular piece of wood is a piece of purple heart uh, wood from Africa. It's a rare um, endangered wood and I tell you that because I've had this piece of wood since 1994. I um, got it to play Zanarkis play art and you can actually listen to that recording on Mode Records um, and because it's um, an endangered piece of wood. I've kept it safely with me um, all of these years and it's one of my most treasured um, pieces of wood actually, one of my most treasured sounds. The collection of bottles I have today come from a variety of sources, clearly my kitchen or my lounge room. But um, also I've been playing with um, bottles for many years and in fact Natasha Anderson wrote me a very, very beautiful piece for about 26 different bottles um, and some of these come from um, that particular composition and collaboration. But um, the idea that again each bottle has such a distinctive pitch and even the same um, make and um, blend of wine and year of um, distribution of wine, um, the bottles will sound slightly different. And I really love that pitch deviation. So you can start to get these kind of bendy um, pitches out of them, even though they're for all intents and purposes, identical bottles. So imperfections in um, manufacturing become a really interesting part of The other part of my ceramic collection is ceramic tiles, which are just the normal tiles you get from Beaumont tiles. And I mount these as well, just with little pieces of foam underneath to give them a little more sweetness. So if that's flat against a surface, it becomes really dull. And just that slight mounting brings the sound to life. Um, these are reasonably high risk instruments, as in they can crack uh, more through airplane travel than through um, playing. But, um, I really like to have them in the collection because when they're mixed with um, bottles in particular, but also small ceramic bowls, it's just the most unbelievable high-pitched cacophony of sound. Um, I'm completely obsessed with um, Sichuan opera and the high-pitched female singing is really, really similar to the high pitch of these objects together. These objects here are not found objects, um, as in they were, a found object is basically an object that was not designed um, as an instrument, it's repurposed as an instrument. Um, these were designed as instruments, these are Indian cowbells. Um, again, they're instruments I've had for a really, really long time and have made their way into many, many different um, albums with many different artists. Um, sound absolutely beautiful dipped in water so you start to get this um, speaking sound through the um, bells and they work really well when mixed in with especially ceramic bowls and those metal bowls I showed you earlier.
Olympics have been part of um, the historic percussion practice for a really, really long time. Um, there's a couple of different derivations. One is through the classical art music tradition from people like um, Johanna Beyer or John Cage, um, amongst many others. But there's also a tradition of found objects amongst almost all folk musics. Um, if you think of the con being just an orange box, or you think of the spoons in Ireland, etc. Um, found objects are just ways of expressing musical ideas, playing rhythm, celebrating together. You will have noticed on my um, video from the solo series with the Australian Art Orchestra that I mix a lot of these found objects with a fixed pitch instrument, um, in that case with the vibraphone. And what I'm really interested in there is to try to find ways of bending fixed pitch instruments. Um, and I find that that sound world, when you start to treat an instrument like the vibraphone, a factory-made instrument, a large, expensive instrument, with all of these small found objects, you start to get this whole new sound world um, appearing, which is really the area that I'm most interested in. Um, found objects take a little bit of specialness <laughs> in order to be shared effectively. So they don't work in every setting. Um, some of the subtleties of all those overtones that you're hearing today get lost in large ensemble settings, for instance, um, and you only hear the attack, which is probably not the most interesting part of the um, overall sound well. So you do have to be careful when and where you use them. But I think they teach us new pitch sequences that can be really, really interesting. Um, I match my found objects, for instance, with um, my prepared piano partner, Eric Griswold, and his instrument. And when you get those two sound worlds together, it's like a hyper piano. This makes the hyper part of the piano. Um, and they also sound really beautiful in settings with double bass, in settings with viola, um, in all kinds of other instrumental settings as they bend our thinking about fixed pitch. Mm -hmm.